In this tutorial, I'm going to show some of the things that you can do with the Simultrack window in the new Synthize 2011. So the basic idea starts out with this tracker view here on the tracker panel. The idea is, well, what if we could look at a lot of those all at the same time? So I'm going to select one of the viewport configurations that includes the Simultrack window. And there are a couple of viewport configurations or we could uh, open up a floating window as well. So it depends on how much monitor space you have and so on. So let's take a look at, at what we can do to start with. So I've got one tracker selected. And if we look over here in the Simultrack window on the, le on the right, we've got a whole bunch of these tiles that are all similar to the, uh, the window on the tracker panel. And each one of these is for a different frame. Now this is an automatically tracked tracker, so there's actually a, a tile displayed for each frame, because the, the rule is there's a, a, a tile displayed wherever there's a key or for the current frame. So since an automatically generated tracker has a, tra has a key on each frame, we're seeing all the uh, different tiles all simultaneously. And We've got here is our tracker name. We've got the tracker color is being shown as well if it's been set. You can see the frame number up at the top left. And if I click on that frame number, the user interface is going to jump to that particular uh, window. So this gives us a very quick uh, look into the uh, whole part of the shot, you know, the whole sequence of the shot for this individual tracker. So you can see if all of a sudden the picture starts looking different at some point, that's indicating a, a problem where that tracker has jumped. You can see if I scroll through a little bit here, you can see the different uh, frames being marked. So now let's see what happens if I select a couple trackers. Now I've got three trackers selected, and you can see there's a row for each tracker. And this is the second major mode of the Simultrack window. So the first mode was showing just one tracker. Here's the second mode has a row for each tracker. And now as I scrub through, it's keeping the current frame aligned uh, at the same place for all the trackers. And what I just did was use the middle mouse uh, pan here to adjust where that current frame is being shown in the interface. So I can scrub through and see the evolution of these particular shots, um, th these particular trackers throughout the shot. And if I wanted to isolate on some particular tracker, I can just click on that tracker name, and now I I've isolated on just that particular tracker, and I can take a look at it in more detail. Now if I decided I wanted to change something, here I've got a whole menu of, of things I can do with it. Here the tracker is locked, so I could unlock it, and then I can start adjusting any of the keys however I like. And we'll look at that a little bit more in a bit. Now the third major mode occurs when you have a whole lot of trackers selected. And here I just selected all the trackers. So now there's only a single tile for each different tracker. And they're all on the same frame. And you'll see that some of the trackers you know, aren't valid, so there's just a, a placeholder tile for them. And if I go and scrub through the shot, you, know, you can see the evolution of each different tracker throughout the shot and look for th problems that might, might occur anywhere within the shot. So again, this is a tool for taking a look at what's going on. Now, so far we've, we've been looking at automatically generated trackers and seen what you can do with them. Uh, they have all these uh, tiles. Now let's go and convert all of these trackers to uh, supervised trackers by fine-tuning them. So that's going to have uh, trackers, uh, uh, keys, in this case, every eight frames. So let's just do that. That will give us a little more uh, information and give us a different look at the situation. So we'll let that run. It's just going and retracking these things. Now if we go and look at one of our trackers, you'll see here's the entire history of the tracker, but we're looking only at the keyframes. And 
And so if I go and scrub through the shot, you'll see that at any given point in time, the current frame is being shown and uh, you know all the other keys. So it, this lets you go, go and adjust the keys, which for a supervised tracker, that's generally what you want to be adjusting. You want to adjust the keys within the shot, and everything else follows after that. Now, if you look at each tile, you'll see that there are actually two different curves that are being displayed. One is showing the tracker figure of merit, which is how well the pattern is matching up with the uh, reference on each frame. And there's also the darker blue curve that's the figure of merit, uh, the error, rather, for the tracker of how far the 2D position is from the 3D position. And that's, of course, valid only after the tracker has been solved and the 3D position is available. But it gives you uh, a, an additional handle on where the problem areas are and the evolution of some particular tracker throughout the shot. Again, I can go and jump throughout the shot to different frames and see what's going on. And um, there, there's a whole other workflow of, of being able to do supervised tracking with this window, but uh, we'll have a separate tutorial for that. This has just been your basic introduction. As you see, there are uh, a lot of different options for the window. Uh, there's a whole lot of little features, and I invite you to check out the Simultrack uh, window in the reference section of the manual. There are a whole lot of details on that. Thanks a lot.